All right, welcome back to another lunch hour video. I'm hoping to keep this one a bit shorter, but luckily there's really not that much content to cover for this final topic or this final exercise here. So we're going to be verifying the configuration for BFD for BGP. And last issue, last video, there were all sorts of problems, but in between videos, I've got them worked out. So here I won't need to include the folder for the logical system since I'm just using the default route. I don't believe logical systems are going to be an exam on the, or a, a topic on the exam. So we're going to be looking for these messages here. We've got no route to host messages. So looking for a notification received. We got that. Let's see. Oops. And okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. Let's just start at the very beginning, actually. Show BGP neighbor pipe match BFD. All right, looks good. And now show BFD session extensive. So we've got two entries, 146.4 and 140.4, it looks good. So the meaning is, okay. All right, so let's take a look, a look at the BFD trace files and they can help with troubleshooting. This is actually something I'm kind of thinking about a lot because I wonder if it would be advantageous in the exam to actually use trace files, but just another layer of complexity is of course never a good thing to add, especially in the heat of, mo of the moment of an exam. But, you know, at the same time, even though it's a little bit more complex to set up tracing, it's, it's obviously going to be a really valuable skill for a high level network engineer to have. And um, it, I just get more information and more of an idea of what is actually going wrong. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more work up front, a little bit more complexity, but it I might the benefits I get from it might make it worth it. So you can see, let's look for that notification message from BGP that it said will be in here. And you can always use the, oh, actually this is a different one from the notification message. So yep, it's just initiating the peer connecting, connect failed on mine. I don't see connect fails on, on theirs, but eventually it looks like it went ahead and initiated the session, session to peer up. So that looks like the important thing to me. Yep, and that's what they've got here. So it looks like they've got two of them. Let's see if there's two of them here. Pipe match, BFD, session to peer. So yep, I've got multiple of them. <clears throat> yep, one to 40.4 and 6.4, just like the documentation. All right, so now it's going to be looking at so viewing detailed BFD events after deactivating and reactivating a loopback interface on purpose. Check to see what happens after bringing down a router or switch and then bringing it back up. To simulate bringing down a router or switch, deactivate the loopback interface on logical system B. All right. So one thing that's really nice that you can do is any file on your system, you can look at it in real time. If you're on a Linux prompt, the equivalent command for this is tail, tail dash F. And that just looks at the, uh, at, at the log as it goes through and you can see it in real time. You don't have to check it before and after. So the command for that in Juniper is monitor start var log and then the, the absolute path to your to your actual log. 
So now if I go and deactivate that, and I'm gonna of course do it with, or at least I'm gonna commit it with this window expanded. So deactivate hello 0, 0.0 family inet. And then with it expanded, I will commit. And then it'll <clears throat> tell me to reactivate it and then check it afterwards. So I'm going to be checking that output twice. So checking it first after deactivating it. And there we go. So notification received. Cease. That was familiar from the Wireshark captures. So the BFD session is down because it received a notification message with a cease code in it. So let's go ahead and roll back that change. And see what we get. We got many more messages. So we've got a, so here's, here's interesting because one thing we noticed in the documentation in the last video, it might have been two videos ago, is that it's recommended not to have graceful restart enabled at the same time that you have BFD enabled. But you can see very clearly Graceful restart is actually enabled. So it's, <clears throat> it's definitely something I, I wish were kind of explained more. It might even be worth a downvote at this point because if they're just gonna say, you know, graceful restart is not recommended, but they're not going to tell you to disable it. Both BFD and graceful restart for BGP on the same device is counterproductive. When an interface goes down, BFD detects this instantly, stops traffic forwarding, and the BGP session goes down, whereas graceful restart forwards traffic despite the interface failure. This behavior might cause network issues, hence we do not recommend configuring both BFD and graceful restart on the same device. But Assuming graceful restart is enabled by default, this example actually does tell you to configure graceful restart and BFD at the same time because it does not tell you how to disable graceful restart. So, I mean, that might be a down, worth a downvote. I'm just going to do a Google is graceful restart enabled by default. So, and then graceful restart. So by default, it's disabled, but I guess I need to specify for BGP. So, ah, here we go. To configure the duration of the BGP graceful restart period, Include the restart time statement at the, okay. Well, does this say, ah, uh, here we go. Well, I mean, this tells you how to disable it. So I, I think you can uh, kind of assume that it is enabled by default because you've got to <clears throat> add this command disable. So yeah, I think it's worth a downvote. I mean, if they're telling you to disable, to enable BFD, and then they're not telling you to disable graceful restart, they're telling you to configure both BFD and graceful restart, even though in the same document, they tell you not to enable both. So I'm sorry, I got to do it. So In the first note under the section 
understanding BFD for BGP, it says not to enable graceful restart and BFD or not to enable both um, on the same device. However, in the example, it does not give a configuration to disable graceful restart as this feature is enabled by default the documentation tells you to have both graceful restart and bfd configured at the uh, C-O-N-F-I-G-U-R-E-D at the same time on the same device. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's like, if they tell you not to do it and then they tell you to do it, like, you know, somebody didn't read that note or, or something, they, they might come away from this with the idea that you got to have graceful restart and BFD at the same time. But it's very clear from that note that that's really not, uh, that's really counterproductive because the features are kind of at odds with one another. So having them both configured at the same time really doesn't make any sense. All right, so moving on, we're going to actually, let's go ahead and take a, a tangent and just disable graceful restart on all of these. And then we'll see it's going to show up differently here. It won't have those extra graceful restart messages. And you can see in the, uh, the verification steps, of course, there's no graceful restart messages because even though they don't give you commands to disable, you can see it is disabled. But I kind of take issue with that because if they're not telling you you need to disable it and it's enabled by default, you know, I, I like some sort of note to say, you know, verify that it is enabled. So, but I'll do a monitor stop. Oh, I can just leave it going. And now I can do edit protocols, BGP, graceful restart. Oops. Ah, perfect. Disable. Okay, and hopefully that will be all that's needed. And of course, I'm gonna to need to do set instead of edit. Perfect. Right, so that is good to go. Let's see, oh. And it looks like we did get a, okay, so it caused the connection to reset now that Graceful Restart is not on there anymore. Let's take a look and see if those BFD messages, or sorry, those Graceful Restart messages are still going to show up when I do what is recommended by the exercise. But that's a good sign that, because it looked like there were multiple commands on there, one of them being adding graceful restart to BGP instead of just <clears throat> configuring it disable, but it looks like that extra step isn't going to be necessary. Well, it looks like I'm running out of time too. I got about two minutes, so I'm going to hopefully take those two minutes and, and just show the 
difference in the messages now that I've got. So let's search for deactivate. Okay, so here we go. And let's, we've already got those running. So let's do a rollback. Oh, and we're gonna have to do, uh, we're just gonna have to type it in again. Deactivate, uh, nope, not logical systems. Interface hello 0.0, .0 family inet, commit. Let's see what kind of messages we get. So we've got nothing about graceful restart, but we only had that when we brought it back up. So let's do that. Hopefully we won't have anything about graceful restart anymore. Yep, nothing on graceful restart, eval BFD on. It was off, but now it's up. So hope you enjoyed watching the video. I've got to cut it short and get back to work. So stay tuned for the next one. More to come soon.